Hello, it's Chris, and uh, today I want to do a video. I want to do. It's basically going to be book recommendations, um, all to do with um, how to. So we're in a quite an important time now in terms of technology development. So to do. So I think to deal with the advances of technology is it's going to come down a pipeline. I think it's important to refer to philosophy to existing knowledge into literature into poetry or whatever like cultural artifacts in general so i'm going to just do a video now where i talk about a bunch that i've just selected from my uh, bookcase basically not all that i could have but like obviously i don't want the video to be too long so i've just selected a few things text that i think are interesting and i'll talk into it about each one but then I want to start off with a little bit of self-promo, because why not? I mean, I'm a writer, I need to promote my own stuff too. <laughs> Silent Engineer, it's available on Amazon. It's the latest novella. Uh, it's a science fiction thriller, cyberpunk. It's also the backstory to the first book I wrote. Um, first novella, sorry, I should say the first novella I wrote, called The Eternal Ship. This is the backstory to that. This is available on Amazon now, you can buy it. It's also available on Alien Rabbit's shop, alienrabbit.co.uk. You can buy that there. It's one, I'll just give it a. It is because it also deals with technology, specifically uh, AI and some possible ramifications you could have in a fictional world. So it's partly been my exploration of the idea of AI in a sort of more of a doom way, like, you know, what, what potential doom scenarios could occur. So it's a pessimistic view on what one possible outcome of using AI in a fictional world. But if that sounds interesting, you can pick that up. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to crack on with these book recommendations. So, I'm going to start off with uh, quite an old text, actually, which will be familiar for anyone who is aware of well, poetry and also theology, I suppose, as well. This is Paradise Lost by Milton. Okay, well-known poem. This is an epic as well. This is a good copy of this. It's just got illustrations too alongside the text i actually just picked this up from works ages ago but it's a beautiful book uh so this is why this i mean well, how does this relate it's the fall of man it's the it's the christian parable of the fall of man basically well via milton's imagination why this why why would an, an atheist like me or all people or agnostic at the very least choose this book because obviously it can relate metaphorically to the potential worst case scenarios, I suppose, of AI. And that's why, and also just because it's a brilliant work, you have to be really um, willing to put the time in with it. Obviously, it's a lot of old school language, um, but it's uh, obviously a classic, so it's worth, and then even if you just want to look at artworks in a book, it's worth uh, dipping in and out of because they're. The, um, the plates are amazing to look at, but yeah, that's probably the reason for that. Ooh, it's a very good book. I remember I read this about a year and a half ago. Mark Fisher, Capitalist Realism. It's essentially a sort of um, yeah, analysis of contemporary uh, capitalism, neoliberalism. Um, you know how why why is it so hard for us to think of an alternative to this neoliberal system that we live in? Um, and then I, I think especially with the because AI in a lot of respects presents an opportunity as well as a risk could it be used for as an oppressive tool or could it be used as an emancipatory tool right it could increase or automation has two potential outcomes maybe in the extremes it could uh, it could emancipate labor so that we have more time as workers to spend develop ourselves and our passions and everything else but it could also just be used as a, a tool of oppression, right? For um, you know, increasing just uh, surveillance capitalism sort of thing, you know. Uh, so this is probably a very good book to refer to in terms of uh, if you want to get further into that analysis, which is very contemporary and is only going to you know, increase, I think, in, in our need for it. Fictional book now, Steppenwolf uh, by Herman Hesse. Uh, well, no, this probably relates less to to some of the other ones, but I think it's probably worth 
greedy anyway, just as a fiction. I don't know why I chose this last piece, but it's, it's, if you want to get a, it's more of a book about alienation, existentialism, and all that. Uh, yeah, man, it's this guy stepping off, and he's sort of like a lonely, wandering half wolf, half man, he feels like. Um, I don't know. I don't know why I chose this one, honestly, but I did. It's worth reading anyway, it's in and of itself. Very contemporary one. I've only read this about a few months ago. Uh, Beyond Chulhan, uh, The Burnout Society. Um, the exploration of how uh, in contemporary capitalism we're so driven to working and we are, everyone's getting exhausted, everyone has to put up this pretense of always being productive all the time. We always have to feel like we have to justify our productive <coughs> labour all the time and our time always has to be used for that. Um, now obviously it goes a lot deeper into more uh, historical ideas. I think he does mention Nietzsche and some of the, probably the existentialists from what I remember. It was actually a while ago that I finished this. I only read it once. But yeah, uh, I think he dives quite a lot to Schopenhauer, Schopenheim, Schopenhauer, sorry, Schopenheimer, I don't know what <laughs> Oppenheimer like it, Schopen, Schopenhauer, and uh, it talks a lot, relates a lot of that back to, you know, the kind of contemporary society of overwork. So, look, obviously, like I said before, potentially, one of the good side of AI, it could uh, aid with that, it could, if we get it right, in terms of, like, how we implement AI, Maybe we won't have to be so much like hamsters on a wheel, constantly fighting for the crumbs, right? So that, that this is an al analysis of the current problem, if you want, with society and the burnout society in general. It's well worth reading. The spoke Zarathustra. Which is uh, I've uh, mentioned this book so many times. It's obviously well uh, worn version of it though i still uh i read this in a very fragmentary way whenever i read it i read bits and bobs of it i don't think i've ever read it all in one sitting actually but that's probably the best way to read it because i might actually read a bit more of it today uh yeah it's Nietzsche's masterpiece really on the on the talking about the idea of the ubermensch what that uh you know that does relate to post-humanism in some way in terms of like the idea of post-humanism probably a lot of the key ideas that basically uh, create what is now post-human philosophy based and theory comes from this book really but uh, it's because it's anti-religious you know don't find meaning in religion you know find meaning in your own life force creativity blah 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 and it's Nietzsche of course so there's, man, there's a lot going on in it but there you go uh, and something more contemporary, which is actually literally is post-human philosophy, is uh, post-human condition by Robert Pepperell, which I think I've mentioned a few times before. Now I've read most of this. It goes a lot into aesthetics, goes into science, goes into this. It's, it's a really nice book as well, just the way it's all illustrated and everything. I've covered this book before actually, but yeah, it goes into memory, neurology, how all these things relate to the idea of post-humanism, the idea of a post-human being. What can that what can I involve if we go beyond being human? We are what if I really like him. I've been watching Altered Carbon actually recently. Now that posits if if we're able to transfer our consciousness, say, to a new body, what sort of complications does that bring up? Because you know, you, your your say for example, I don't know, mom dies, it's very sad. But then you can get her transfer her consciousness transferred, but if she gets transferred to like, I don't know, a fifty year old man's body. How does that affect, well, for first, her consciousness, her sense of self? So, obviously, like, if, I'm theoretically, if we get to the point where we can do such, you know, advanced things with science that we can actually transfer someone's consciousness to another body, what sort of complications does that bring up in terms of identity, in terms of, like, how we relate to the world and ourselves and our own sense of self? Because in a way it will just be irrelevant, right? Like if we actually get to the stage where, theoretically, if we can transfer a consciousness, like my, my my mind, for example, to another vessel, then, on one sense, it could be hugely emancipatory, and obviously I'm thinking about this a lot because I'm watching Alton Carbon at the minute. But another way, it can create just another, even more privileged elite, right, who maintain their power through that technology. I mean, I actually explored this quite a lot with. 
early transhumanist sort of socialistic theory I used to write about. I've deleted the blog now ages ago. I got a bit. It was early writing, early philosophy, early theory. So I just got really a bit like, oh, what am I I'm writing about? This is too mad. It's too. But I think it's it's moments more here now. Anyway, this is a good <coughs> book. It's to explore such things, such questions. Um, goes into observer effect quite a lot, some quantum mechanics, all that sort of thing. Gives physics all sorts. It's a really interesting book. It's a good reader for uh, exploring loads of yeah the ideas of what pushing. It's got the manifesto in here as well, I believe, for pushing the manifesto. Good one in terms of just uh, art in general. Birth of tragedy, Frederick Nietzsche, where he talks about the value of art and aesthetics and the theatrical basically yeah, it's his first book not one that he was very particularly proud of but himself but, I mean, it is also quite interesting it talks a lot about Apollo and Dionysian as well as tendencies in the human imagination and that's probably very relevant to discussions around AI in terms of like art production and stuff I guess uh, Orwell Books and cigarettes. This is probably a bit of a weird one. Uh, it's just a selection of essays. It's been a while since I read it actually, but uh, a bit of a vague one actually. That. That's, but yeah, it's worth reading anyway. Uh, well, this is a classic book, uh, uh, the Red Book by Carl Jung. So this is a book that is. Again, we're like for this book, Sarah Fuster, it's very interesting to flip through. Uh, it's hard to read in all in one go, obviously, it's quite large. It's almost the way it's presented, it's almost like a Bible in itself. And he does relate a lot of the, these dreams do relate to God and Christ and everything else. His own relationship, I suppose, to that, the, that so called divinity. I mean, Christ as a figure is interesting, of course, but I'm not a Christian. But basically, yeah, it's just, it's worth reading because there's a lot of I mean I think from what I understand of Carl Jung he was going having a nervous breakdown when he wrote a lot of these um, ideas down and you know, he talks about intoxication and mythology redefining the soul uh, there was one bit which is, I really do remember where he's talking about war as well and like what that represents in the human psyche which is pretty mind blowing and but essentially one of the things he says in that is that whatever you do you know if you start causing pain to other people that means you're doing it to yourself like if you if I had a rifle now and I started shoot uh, shot someone in the head that's a pain you're doing to the collective mind the collective unconscious if you will you you're and that obviously that is true because if you know like if post-traumatic stress we know that exists if I if you start engaging in actions which are going to negatively affect everybody, then you are going to, that guilt will not die with you, you know, like it's, it carries on and you, you carry those bricks, you carry those memories, we are after all, our minds are comprised of memories which we revisit and if you have traumatic memories from the past then they will, they will, in a sense, our past memories do have an effect on our present because well, the more that you're trapped by past memories and traumas, the more that they have control they have over you, right? You have to, in a certain way, you have to learn to forget, I guess, if you've got, but then, you know, if, it's, if we're talking about something like you actually taking another human being's life, that's, that, that's like, that's terrible, you know, that's a terrible affliction to live with, I can't imagine what that's like, anyway, I don't know why I've veered into that, but. Yeah, um, I'll probably end this video there. It's already been 14 minutes, hasn't it? Uh, probably a few other books I could recommend, but I don't want to go through my entire library. But basically, I hope it's been useful in some sense. And that, uh, that gives anybody who wants to dive into postmodern uh, theorizing or that sort of thing a starting point. Uh, Posthumanism is a, just a, just a huge area of philosophical investigation. It's quite trippy in a lot of respects, you know. Terence McKenna is probably a good one if you want to read as well. I've seen in this general realm. And I'll say this with if I just recommend this, but I've not read it yet. Schopenhauer, World as Will and Representation. Something I actually do need to look into more because I am more, I do want to figure out a bit more 
um, just the idea of the will, because Schopenhauer is basically the the uh, the philosopher who really sketched all that work out in terms of like the will as uh, the will as in action in the world. Like you know, that's all we are essentially. You know, so do we are the will? Our will is our creative will is what creates meaning in the world, basically, and that's about it. That's about that's all there is. Uh, the world is just pure will. So, yeah, I don't know. Well, <laughs> I need to read it more, basically, anyway. So, leave the video there. Like and subscribe if you like this video. Uh, I'll probably try and do more of these, like, every now and again. Because it just, well, I can. Yeah, I enjoy it. I enjoy just theorising on the fly, to be honest. So, uh, actually, if anyone's watching this, if you have any ideas for uh, subjects you'd like me to cover, obviously I have to. I should really be asking people on my channel what they want to see more of from me. So, yeah, I mean, if you want me to just cover a certain topic, whether it be um, just covering it in general, or even just doing book recommendations as well, for um, where you could go to to find out more about this subject, so get even have novel ideas from me, then uh, yeah. Just ask, you know, and I'll record a quick little video talking about it. Uh, I don't know what else. Art for a day. Then I'll tie it up. Some art I did called Ned for drawing the other day. Bada bing, bada bosh. Bye bye bye. Like and subscribe. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah, blah.